So recently, I had this awesome project from a client who want to bring their 3D model into life using Blender. Upon finishing the project, she wanted me to export the model into FBX format so that they can upload it to Game Engine Unity. But you know how the project go? Sometimes, you hit a bump in the road. And this time, it was a big one. I spent hours perfecting the model, getting every detail just right. But when I tried to export it to FBX format, disaster struck. The textures, they were incomplete. It was like a puzzle missing half its pieces. But you know me, I'm not the one who easily backed down from a challenge. So I rolled up my sleeves, dove back into Blender, and got to work figuring out what went wrong. And after some trial and error and days of research, I finally cracked the code. I found out that most 3D file formats just don't support exporting textures. Materials are too implementation specific and tightly tied to the rendering system they belong to or software they were created with. You can't, for the most part, import or export material definitions between applications. Other 3D software don't understand Blender's built-in node system. The only thing that it understands inside of Blender is the principled BSDF, material output node, and the image textures. For this reason, the solution that I found was to recreate materials from scratch again with the provided textures and available maps. This is what we call texture baking. Texture baking is a process of transferring texture and material data into image textures so that it can work on other 3D software and game engines like Unity and Unreal Engine. But why is texture baking such a game changer? Texture baking isn't just about fixing incomplete textures. It's also about efficiency so that 3D software like Blender won't have to spend so much time computing and rendering multiple textures and materials, especially on projects with larger scenes. All right, in this video, I'll show you how you can fix incomplete textures in Blender FBX export so that you can export your 3D model to game engines like Unity and Unreal or any other 3D software. Now, you can see here a building model. This has multiple textures with procedural material. We have glass, metal, roughness, and color. What we're going to do is we will convert this multiple textures and material data into image textures and put all into one map for the whole thing through a process called texture baking. For a while, let's disable this light and camera here so that they won't be selected. Now, if we select the model, go into edit mode and select all, you can see that the UV map is overlapping each other. It's because it has one object with multiple textures. To fix that, go to object data properties. I'm going to create a new UV map and let's call it baking. And then with that selected, go to edit mode, select all by pressing A on the keyboard, go to UV, unwrap, then smart UV unwrap. Increase your island margin to about 0.02. .02. So it will prevent that UV island overlap each other. The thing that we should avoid is the overlapping of the UV islands and UV island going out of the UV map space. So now I have two UV maps. I'm going to select the baking map and this is where we're going to bake our textures. Go to material property. Select the first material. Open image editor window here. First, we're going to bake the color map. Let's add an image texture. For us to bake onto our color map, click New, rename this into Building. Click and drag down here to change the value at the same time. I'll put 2048 then hit OK. The color space should be RGB. Because this image texture will directly contribute to the color data of the model. Now, what I need to do is copy this image texture across all other materials as well. To do this, you simply copy the image texture by pressing Ctrl C and paste it to other materials by pressing Ctrl V. Now, make sure that these image textures are selected. So let's select them one by one on our materials. Before we bake the color map image texture, make sure that the metallic value on any of the shaders are set to zero. Otherwise, the render output will be completely black. So now, Let's check them one by one again. As you can see, we have a shader with metallic value set to one. This is actually the metallic signage found on the building entrance here. Now, change the metallic value into zero to avoid render issues. Make sure you select the image texture. Now, let's set up the render setting for texture baking. Go to render properties, change the render engine to cycles. 
because texture baking doesn't work with EV. You can use either GPU or CPU to render. I'll select GPU for faster render. For render maximum sample, change the value to 10. This will bake faster and retain the quality of the bake. Let's enable denoise. Now, scroll down to bake setting, change the bake type to diffuse, and this is going to be the color. And then I also want to turn off the direct and indirect because we don't want to actually bake the lighting which is casting on the object and leave the color option enabled because we only want to bake the color. Now make sure the image textures are selected. By selecting these image textures, we're telling Blender that those are the images we want to bake to. And of course the object we want to bake, because that way we're telling Blender that that is the object that we want to bake. We're now ready for baking. Click the bake button. Now, you will see a loading bar below. The render time to bake the textures will depend on the performance of your computer. The higher the performance, the faster the baking will be. And there we go. It finished baking the color map. So now, we need to save this image to a file on a computer. To do that, click image, then I'm going to click on save as. I'm going to change the name into building color because this texture is our color map. Then hit save. Next, we're going to bake a roughness map. To do that, go back to material properties, select the first material, change the color space into non-color since this image texture will not directly contribute to the color data of the model. As you can see, when I go to other materials, the color space also changed into non-color because these image textures are linked to each other. Next, set the metallic value to 1 again. Make sure that image texture and the model are selected at the same time. Go to Render Properties, change the bake type into Roughness, then hit Bake. Once finished, save the roughness image texture like we did earlier. I'm going to rename this into Building Roughness. Then save. Next, we're going to bake a normal map. To do that, go back to Material Properties. Select the materials one by one. Make sure that image texture are all selected. If not, select it in the model that we want to bake. Next. Go to Render Properties, change the bake type into Normal, then hit Bake. Once finished, save the normal image texture like we did earlier. I'm going to rename this into Building Normal, then hit Save. Next, we're going to bake a metallic map. Go back to Material Properties. As you can see, this last material is the only shader with metallic material. And this is completely metallic. To bake metallic map, we need to enable the Blender Node Wrangler add-in. We're going to use this to preview the node on the object. Next, let's add an RGB node. Connect the RGB node into the metallic input. If we slide down the color to black, the material turns non-metallic. If we slide up the color to white, the material turns completely metallic. Now, press Control shift and select the RGB node. This will help us to preview the metallic values on the material output. White means fully metallic, then black means non-metallic. I'm going to make this fully white because we want it to be fully metallic. Next, select the image texture and make sure the image textures are all selected. By selecting these image textures, we're telling Blender that those are the images we want to bake to. And of course the object we want to bake. Because that way we're telling Blender that that is the object that we want to bake. Next. Go to Render Properties. Now, for the bake type, we can't see the metallic map option. What we select instead is the emission, short for emit, then hit the bake button. Once finished, save the metallic map texture like we did earlier. I'm going to rename this into Building Metallic, then hit Save. Alright. Now that the baking process is finished, before I delete all of the procedural materials, let's save the Blender file to make a backup in case something went wrong with the materials. To do that, simply save as the Blender file, increment it by 1, then hit Save. Now, let's delete all the materials. Create new material. 
I'm going to select the principled BSDF shader, and then I can press Ctrl Shift T, and that is going to bring up Blender's file browser. Go to folder where you save the image textures, select all the baked textures, then select principled texture setup. As you can see, the textures are not correctly mapped. It's because the active UV map is different from the UV we have created. To fix this, go to the Object Data Properties tab and enable the camera icon next to the map we created, which is the baking UV map. Now, let's try to export this model into FBX. Then let's open the FBX file. As you can see, the model is now exported together with its textures. That's it for this tutorial. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching. See you in the next one.